Thanks for joining us for Together. I'm Karen Lee. We have a great show for you today. For the next half hour, I'll share with you some of the best stories showing people coming together for Colorado. Stories of neighbors helping neighbors and even strangers helping out strangers. This show is dedicated to only that, the positive, inspiring things happening all around you. So sit back and enjoy. And Denver's busy restaurant scene, it's not always easy to stand out. But there's one spot in Rhino that is getting noticed for how it's coming together for Colorado. It's called Comal. As Jamie Leary explains, customers get a lot more than a meal when they visit. Sylvia Hernandez is a cook at Comal. It makes me happy to cook. For her, the job is about more than just food. Enchiladas. That's because Comal is also a classroom. Opportunities are there for everybody. How it's giving women the confidence to start their own business. That's next on Together. Well, many kids are busy with summer camps this time of year, and tucked away in the high country, there's a camp that's doing more than getting girls outside. It's called Elevate Her. And as Matt Kroschel shows us, it's giving young women lifelong skills. Come on, Karen. Come on. Come on. Caroline Woodell can't climb this rock wall on her own. Requires teamwork. She is relying on her 20 new friends to help her. It's challenging. Caroline is able to make it to the top thanks to Elevate Her. Really wanted to bring a program that brought girls together. The nonprofit that's giving girls a summer of adventure for next to nothing. That's coming up on Together. Well, kids are never too young to learn about art. And that's why a Denver company is coming together to give students a way to connect with the craft. Joel Hillen was there for the interactive lesson. I would use metal and, and clay. Esther Stuckey already knows a lot about art. I like to create realism and abstract. She's made a lot of her own. I like art because I feel like it's a way of expressing yourself. They're old books. But like most kids, Esther has never bought a piece of professional artwork. I'd sell it to you if you were five hundred dollars. Until now. Today was really fun because I got to see a ton of like amazing artwork. Thank you. How this art buying experience is teaching kids important life lessons. That's later on Together. And looking forward to that. Well, there's a restaurant in Denver that is only open a few hours a day. But if you can find time to make it there, you'll get more than a meal. That's because this restaurant is also giving back to the community. Jamie Leary and photojournalist Bob Burke take us to Comal. I am a happy person. I am a very happy and positive person most of the time. Sylvia Hernandez tries to find something positive in everything she does. She's found it's a key ingredient to success, along with staying focused. I think when you lose your focus on what you do you want, it's when you stop doing it and you don't feel that passion. She moved here with her family two years ago and needed a fresh start. Through the nonprofit Focus Points, she met women in similar situations. We start talking about cooking. Like we want to cook and what's your specialty? Focus Points hired Slavica Park to figure out a way to help women in the Globeville area. It was created in a direct response to what the community wanted. The restaurant Comal was born, and so far it's helped to hire and educate 27 women from all walks of life. It truly feeds my soul. It, it really does. For $15 an hour, they learn a wide array of skills. The goal is to set them up to be able to manage a restaurant and, like Sylvia, start her own business. She is close to that goal, but I have a feeling it might be hard for her to leave Comal. I love it here. To me, it's like, a, I don't know how can I say, but now it's like a, my family is part of my life. It really is magical coming in and just seeing this woman from all different uh, parts of the world coming together and cooking, but then also seeing the overwhelming support from the Denver community. Well, Komal is just amazing. We wanted to talk more about it. And of course, the women that you met while you were there. Let's talk about Sylvia a little bit, Jamie. Tell us more about her and what's her plans. She is such a determined woman. What I didn't have time to share with our viewers was that she's been through a lot and she was actually scammed out of most mm. of her food truck money. And she's worked so hard and she's almost back. And she um, 
She's actually going to start a food truck in a couple of months, so she's raised money after being scammed mm. out of it, and she um, she's just so passionate. Despite being through what she's been through, she's still able to to make it work and follow her passion, and she had such good advice about how to be happy. Yeah, she's so yeah. optimistic, isn't she? She, she really is, yeah. <laughs> cheery, very cheery personality. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about this program and how it helps women. I know there, it supports a lot of women, not just not just Sylvia. Yeah, exactly. So it was started by a group called Focus Points, and it's a nonprofit in the Globeville neighborhood and it caters to um, immigrant women. So you'll see foods from all cultures uh, at Comal. Mm -hmm. And it really helps them to um, get a leg up and learn about the cooking industry and start their own business and get their business licenses. So um, it provides opportunities to not only feed the community, but teach women who wouldn't have this opportunity otherwise. And um, it's just had an amazing impact so far. Yeah, it looked like a family, I think, as she was talking about it, didn't she? Yes, it is a huge Tight family. Yeah. She doesn't want to leave there. Um, even when she does start her food truck, um, 27 women, and it's growing, have been through the program. Uh, eight have already received their, received their business license. Oh my gosh, that's so great. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. So well, let's talk a lot about when people can actually go by Call Mall, enjoy some of that food. When is it open? Yeah, it almost makes it more enticing. The hours are limited, so it's open Monday through Friday, but only from 11 to 2 p.m. And it's at Ringsby Court. Um, it's in a great little community of entrepreneurs, too. Um, you can obviously get more information anytime about this at cbsdenver.com. Jamie, thanks for being with us. And it covers lunchtime, so that's perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> thanks so much. Well, there's another organization coming together for Colorado. This one is focused on young girls. It's called Elevate Her. The nonprofit is dedicated to teaching middle school students leadership skills by getting them outside. Matt Kroschel and photojournalist John Mason caught up with the energetic group in Leadville and then tried to keep up with them. On belay? Belay on. Climbing? For Caroline Woodell, the rock face is her challenge for the day. Requires teamwork. The Elevate Her program brought Caroline and 20 other young girls from Salida and Buena Vista here to build confidence. You push yourself out of your comfort zone and um, it's challenging. You just can see so much growth, um, just their personality, they have more confidence, they're willing to push themselves. Kristen Van Norman dreamed up this not-for-profit as a way to build community. The program costs the girls only $50 for an entire summer of fun. Middle school and high school girls go through this like crazy, strange, hormonal like period where there's not like a lot of camaraderie between girls and so I really wanted to bring a program that brought girls together. Meaningful relationships built while out in the wild, learning from the adults who share knowledge and so much more. They don't just help us with the program, like during activities, like if you're having a bad day, they'll talk to you, they're always there for you. It seems the only thing holding this program back is finding the funding to allow more girls to get involved. And that's something Kristen is confident will work itself out. I have a waiting list that is significantly longer. A bunch of girls from Leadville wanted to get into the program and we just don't have the capacity, um, which means we don't have the funding to do so. That's Matt Crochet reporting for us. And we know many of you will want to help out Elevate Her. If that's you, we've put more information on our website for you, cbsdenver.com, on how you can pitch in and get more girls in the great Colorado outdoors. The 4th of July can be a fun time, we all know that, but for dogs, it can also be a little scary. One pup ran away from home on the holiday, and when our viewers heard about it, boy, did all of you step up. How you helped bring this dog back home. Well, this is one happy reunion. We have an update on a dog who ran away from home after being spooked by fireworks. In true Colorado fashion, people came together to help find Axel. And now he's safely back home with his owner. The German Shepherd got away on the 4th of July and people reported seeing him on the next door, but no one could catch him. That is until about a week ago. Someone finally caught up with Axel at 33rd and Magnolia, about two miles away from home. His owner is so grateful for everyone's help. Come together like this for a dog. What else can we do as a community? The strengths that's there, the people that are reaching out. I have phone calls, volunteers, they wanted to do a search and rescue and trap him. Just great stuff. It is beautiful. Axel did seem to be a little hurt, so he's been checked out by a vet. His owner is just happy 
to have him back home again where she could take care of him. Well, we know how much Coloradans love their dogs. We have dogs. Enjoy uh -huh. them. Meteorologist Dave Aguilar is with us this, this day. And Dave, you've got a lot of great pet pictures great that have been coming in. Great pet pictures. You know, officially we're in the dog days of summer, which True. starts uh, July 3rd, mm -hmm. and it lasts for 40 days. That's when you could see Sirius, the dog star in the sky. But take a look. Uh, we've got, I think, a Labradoodle <laughs> and maybe a Boxer there from Clinton off. He calls that puppy love. For sure. We and love check, that. Out, check out these guys. Ralph oh, uh, Jr. and Chip sent this in. This is Dad and Matt T. I, I'm guessing that might be Dad and that might be Matt T. But I love those bow ties. <laughs> uh, don't you? Okay. Those We've got a few more. Now, Ermeline Shively, she uh, sends us a lot of weather pictures. She yeah, sent she sure us some does. Great mm -hmm. pictures. And she's the one that sent this one in, calling it Doggy Kisses. And the last one here from Laura Phillips Aww. at Jackson Lake State Park. Now, if you look real closely here, this guy, this guy has four legs, mm -hmm. and he needs a little help to get in. He's yeah, a little yeah. shy getting Why? in the water. This is a tripod. Oh, this dog here has three legs, and he's just walking right in. No and problem. we love to see those life jackets on him too, getting right? In the water. Oh yeah, that looks so refreshing. Doesn't oh, it, it sure does. Oh, we yeah. always appreciate all the pictures coming in. We love mm -hmm. our dogs. We want to see you out and about enjoying our great state. So email your pictures to us at Together for Colorado at CBS.com. You can also post them on social media using the hashtag for Colorado. And we will be sure to share them on this show. We love to see them, so keep them coming. Mm -hmm. Well, doctors come together for Coloradans every day. We know they do more than just save lives. They're important, big parts of our community. Well, we know one doctor who's made a lasting impression on his patients, how he's being honored after spending nearly half a century on the job. This week on our Together for Colorado calendar, on Wednesday, it's the Suds for Suds fundraiser at Epic Brewing. Money raised will benefit Attend Denver, an organization dedicated to promoting success in school. On Friday, the Barth Hotel Assisted Living Community in Denver will be transformed into a theater. Check out the production of the Sunshine Boys and you'll support senior housing options. On Saturday, come together to support those who have lost a loved one to addiction. The Rise Up Against Addiction 5K will be at the Great Lawn Park in Lowry. For more information on these events, just visit the Together for Colorado page at cbsdenver.com. A surgeon has come together for Colorado by saving lives for decades, and his 42 years of service was recognized with a special tribute this week. The hospital honored Dr. Ernest Moore's by renaming the trauma center after him. Dr. Moore's colleagues say he developed the center into one of the best in the country with one of the highest survival rates. Denver police officer Tony Lopez was shot in the line of duty. He says Dr. Moore saved his life. It's amazing, obviously. I don't know how you uh, ever thank someone for saving your life, but uh, to be invited was, was awesome. And um, we, we have a very uh, good relationship, and it's continued since the day I got hurt and since the day he saved my life. With certain patients, you develop relationships that endure your entire life. The trauma center treats more than 2,700 patients a year. Coming together for Colorado tonight through art. A group of students got the chance to check out the Cherry Creek Arts Festival last weekend, but that's not all. They also had the opportunity to purchase some art for their schools. Joe Hillen and photojournalist Bill Mashore show us how the experience is helping the next generation of artists connect with their craft. How long have you been doing art for? Brooklyn Duran and Esther Stuckey will be sixth graders this fall at Denison Montessori. Both are artists. I like to create realism and abstract. They were chosen by their art teacher and armed with a $500 grant to buy art to hang in their school. Susan Banke runs the grant program through Janice Henderson Investors. I'm beyond impressed with them. They know art. They are asking great questions. They're very inquisitive. They're very engaged. The girls didn't know exactly what they were looking for. Something that definitely has a meaning. But like most good art, they knew it when they saw it. We were looking at this piece because it is very inspiring and we think it would be very good in our school. This artwork is based on a Chinese girl who had a critical heart condition. She was adopted into a family who saved her life. Each year they celebrate by raising money to help other children who face similar challenges. The large art piece was $7,500, but artist Aaron Heckenberg found a smaller piece and offered a deal. It's normally 825, but because you guys would like something like that so much, 
I'd sell it to you for your five hundred dollars. It was time to decide. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We like okay. it. <laughs> well, Thank you. All in a day's work for these aspiring young artists. Nice making business. Nice, nice negotiating with you. Very good. <laughs> I love that group huddle at the end. It was so great. Can't help but make you no, smile. No, we want it. We love the story so much. We love this program. We want to talk more about these girls. So Joe Hillen was kind enough to sit in with us a little bit today. So let's talk about these girls. What did they learn having this experience? Yeah. So the experience starts back in March. There's a whole mm -hmm. curriculum that goes along with this from Janice Henderson Investors. So the art teacher selects them. Then they come over and uh, fill out a curriculum. So they really learn what it is that they're going to experience. And then they have the experience themselves. They're going to all of these vendors. They're going to each of the artists and they're asking questions mm -hmm. about how they do their art. But for the girls, and I thought this was mm -hmm. interesting, what they really wanted to know was the why of the art. Why did you create this art? Not necessarily mm -hmm. the how. And that gave them meaning. They're so curious. We love their curiosity, yeah, which is absolutely. great. How long has this program been, been around? Is it new or has it been with us for a while? It's been, it's been around for 18 years, if you can believe it. So, oh my gosh. you know, the grant provides $500 mm -hmm. for each of the schools to go out and purchase the art. Mm -hmm. And they've been doing this, and now there's art hanging in schools and has been for 18 years. Oh, that's incredible. What about schools that are watching this right now? They want to get involved in this. How do they do that? Yeah, because it's such a cool program yeah, for sure. and, and, and a unique experience yeah. for the kids because they really get to see this art and experience it in a different way. So, Janice Henderson Investors mm -hmm. has set up a link at the Cherry Creek Arts Festival website where schools can go and they can sign up, and there's a little bit of a competition there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they want to make sure that the schools really want to do this, that this is something that they want to, to benefit their students. But 24 schools are cho chosen each year. That's incredible. Yeah. And there's probably some inspiring artists in there, right? This really connects them, right? And, and they're invested in something like this. Exactly. The artists love it just as much as the young mm -hmm. ones. And I asked those two girls, I said, so are you going to be professional art, right. you know, artists when you grow up? And they said, oh, I don't know. But uh, they hope to continue in their art. And I said, maybe one day your art will be on display here at the mm -hmm. Cherry Creek Arts festival and they said yeah that they would like be something. that idea yeah but they do joel thanks for being with us we My appreciate pleasure. it boulder would not be boulder without this annual tradition we love it tube to work day has been bringing people together for more than a decade we have the highlights from this week's event Summer wouldn't be the same without grilling, but grills, we all know, are not cheap. So one store manager in Thornton is coming together for Colorado to make sure the kids get the summer experience they deserve. Joe manages the Walmart at 128th in Quebec. He donated a grill for the Thornton Police Department's summer youth programs. The department says it'll allow them to serve even more kids. Great job, Joe. Way to go. Well, last week on Together, we shared the story of a young woman in Greeley whose trip to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in D.C. changed her life. It opened her eyes to service and brought her closer to her grandfather, who is a Vietnam veteran. It was a moving story, and you connected with us about it. Richard Campos emailed us to thank us for sharing their beautiful relationship. He says, the story has brought tears to me as I am a Vietnam veteran and reminded Richard of his 11-year-old grandson who called him a hero. Well, I love getting feedback from you, so please don't hesitate to let me know a story that you've seen today has touched you. Just drop me an email at togetherforcolorado at cbs.com. I look forward to hearing from you, and you can also email me directly. Well, thanks so much for joining us on this week's episode of Together. We'll see you back here next week with new stories that showcase the best of people coming together for each other and for Colorado. Until then, we just love this next event that we're going to leave you with. It's one of our favorite things about Colorado. Photojournalist Eddie Castro shows us the best from tube to work day. Enjoy those funny outfits and the cool, crisp water.